G'day everyone and welcome to episode three of the Battleforge Gaming Podcast. I'm Background Mike. I've got BFG Justin with me. G'day guys. And today we're joined by a special guest, Alex. Those from the TikTok stream will know him as Raging Red Rusky. How's it going, guys? How are we going, boys? Thanks for thanks for go- jumping on the podcast. That's all right. I mean, I don't have to travel too far, so that's right. It is at your place after yep. all. Pretty easy. How's your How's your week been, Justin? You've been going all right. Apart from work, as you know how that goes. Uh, busy, hey, busy. The streams have been good. The streams have been good. I've been making progress on the charity model. So that would be the Adeptus Custody Blade Champion. That's very close to being finished. And when it's finished, that will go up on eBay for people to be able to bid. That's right. That's the that's going to be auctioned on eBay for uh, for a charity. Yeah, so that's for uh, Brush Liquor came up with the idea of a secret Santa where some content creators could paint some models and basically auction them off and raise money for, I think it was a children's charity in the Netherlands. And all proceeds are going to go towards that. So that's that's pretty close to finished. And before that, I was painting the Blood Angel Jump Pack Captain. And he has gone somewhat... Um, I don't know if I I don't know if I'd classify it as viral, but he's definitely trending. This is uh this is a smash captain. I've got actually I've got a little video for those that haven't seen him and for those watching live on YouTube, I'm gonna put up a little bit of a little bit of a turntable to give the, people a taste. The turntable that is uh unfortunately blocking Alex, but <laughs> So how's how's he gone? Um yeah, he was really fun to paint. He was really fun to paint. And I painted him up quickly too, because I was very sort of motivated to get him finished. I wanted to try and build and paint him within a week to be able to sort of ride that, uh, I guess, the hype like train. The new behind, release. Behind the new release New stuff. release train, yep. Yep. Yeah. And it has worked pretty good. So he, the last time I checked on Instagram, he had six and a half thousand likes, which for, for my stuff is, is pretty good. And I think for most hobby stuff is actually pretty. I was going to say, too. I think for most people, you'd be pretty happy with six and a half thousand thousand likes and and sixty thousand. Yeah, sixty thousand plus views on it. So yeah, and climbing still. Anytime you put up some content and it starts to get more than ten percent in terms of likes to views ratio, you you know you've sort of made a pretty good post. Yeah, so. that's awesome. Yeah, apart from that, that's really that's really about it. As people know, I paint pretty slow so two models in in sort of three weeks is is pretty good for me it's a big few weeks yeah 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 no it's awesome to hear and it's, yeah it's so cool to see the the smash captain doing well because the video like the reel looks really really cool the lighting on it's awesome and for it to see it actually get the traction that it's getting is is really cool as well mm, awesome. the, the reels just help with the full 360 of the model because you can get the front shot and that that's all fine and well but Getting a full rotation of the model, seeing all the angles of it, I think helps out a lot. Because I put the photo up as well, and I, that's gone well as well. But nowhere near the the reaction that the reel got. So, are all of your at the moment are all your reels getting more traction than just the still photos? No, for a while it was just the still photos on IG, but this reel has has popped off. So, it's yeah. good. That's wicked. It's make, making me want to paint the, the jump pack guys now because they're still relatively new. And if I can get them done, then I'd like to see how they sort of the attention they get too. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. That's very cool. And Alex, you've been going well, man? Yeah, not too bad. Yeah, good. That's really awesome. Do you keep, are you hobbying every day at the moment like, oh, like Justin is? Or <laughs> oh, Most days where I can, like, it, it's hard allocating a lot of time. I do a lot of travel for work, so yeah, well, I've got to find the time when I do find the time. Yeah, and that's something we sort of spoke on in the last episode of how hard it can be to find find that time. Like One of the things we touched on with Mark in the previous episode was having that hobby space ready to go do you have a dedicated hobby space ready to go i do have a dedicated hobby space but i've also got like a travel kit oh Um, okay so when i'm on the go i can just set up wherever i am awesome that's pretty cool i haven't heard of that yet that's that's awesome 
finally we get to ask Alex some questions. Yeah, yeah. We've been we've been sitting here <laughs> patiently. <laughs> Alex turned up about an hour before the podcast and we're sitting on the couch and we were like wanting to ask hobby questions. <laughs> we're like, no, no, it'll make for good content. <laughs> <laughs> so we've been holding off on anything hobby related to ask him. So yeah, uh, hopefully we, that translate to, to a couple of good answers, I think. I think now we just have to pace ourselves and not just blurt out everything I've been thinking of for the last yeah. hour or so. But uh yeah, that's that's a cool one, the travel kit. I've got uh I've got some some exciting stuff happening over here as well with, okay. with okay. uh Battleforge gaming. So today is the official launch of the Battleforge Gaming website, which is battleforgegaming.com. Uh so that went live just before Alex arrived. Hopefully, it should be still up. <laughs> Hopefully. I don't, I don't think we've been taken down just yet. An official announcement, so hopefully so it's up. I've, just for those, again, watching live, I've got a little bit of a, a preview of the homepage of the website up now. Uh, but also to sort of tie in with that, we're going to be doing another giveaway. So those remember the, uh, this, the Wolf tutorial giveaway. We're doing, which, a, we're doing a giveaway? Yeah, yeah. So you remember you remember earlier when I asked for your bank account details? Yeah. Yeah, so we're doing a giveaway. Uh, <laughs> so just to encourage... I was wondering why you were asking. I just blindly gave him my details. Yeah, so get on this one, guys, before Justin cancels the card. But <laughs> no, no, he knows about it. It's, it should be fine. <laughs> What, can, what what's what are we giving away? Yeah, so for those that go to the website, uh, your first time visitor to battleforgegaming.com, there'll be the little pop-up. And if you subscribe to the Battleforge Gaming mailing list, uh, you go into the draw to win uh, a model, a hero model box up to 60 mil. So like Rebute, Gilliman and... Gazgul. Uh, yeah, Gazgul, Lionel Johnson, that size model. Um, literally couldn't be easy. You just sign up for the mailing list and then you're in the drawer and we'll be drawing that live on the podcast, uh, episode number five. So about a f- month from now then. Yeah. So a month, a month from this one, uh, that we'll be drawing that live on the podcast. So obviously for those watching live, get on that. And for those listening later on the streaming services, definitely jump on battleforgegaming.com and subscribe to that mailing list. Do you um, need a, do you need a hero for one of your armies, Alex? No, you got them all. No, I got it. I got most of everything. Oh, okay, <laughs> so everyone but free Alex. Model, though. Free model. <laughs> oh, no, that's that's economical of you. I like it. So someone else has a chance. Alex is out. He's he's not going to do it. So, what else? What else is on our website? Right yeah. Now? So so right now, uh, it's still pretty pretty chill. But uh, we've got a bit of merch. So we've got uh, branded hoodies, uh, branded tees, just the basic. BFG logo, yep. uh, and then we've also got some cool stuff like gift cards, just digital gift cards, and also the uh, we've got a BFG mug. So for those coffee drinkers or those in need of a paint pot, got a BFG mug, and we've also got a paint journal. So for writing down recipes and I'm big on the paint diaries. Yeah, big on the paint diaries. Yeah, so the paint the paint journal would should be pretty cool actually. So definitely, um, definitely for those listening, check it out. And the website is kind of this. It's a really exciting time for for BFG because the website is really going to be the launching pad for the Death Watch giveaways that you painted up um, yep. really early on yep. in the stream. So those those Death Watch Marines, that's going to be where it's all run through. All the ways for getting entered into that giveaway is all going to be done through the website. So to get it live now is it's a massive relief for me and. It's a good good milestone for us, I think. So. Yeah. Well, I think it's gonna be cool that people have got the potential to own um, the models that I paint on stream. So that'd be cool. That'd yeah. Be cool. I think the most exciting thing for me is like for for Alex and myself, we obviously get to see your stuff in person. So we know we know the quality. We know how good it is. It's kind of hard to convey that, even though the reels look really clean. Um, it's kind of hard to see it like to to understand how much work goes into it in person. So yeah, I can definitely get rid of this website now because that is just right in the way of everyone. And we're back. 
So yeah, that's uh that's how exciting it's been for me. I'm I'm pretty hyped today. Nice. All the all the background work, so background mics, background work is yeah, finally it's coming s- together. Seeing some uh light of day, yeah. which is yeah. That's right. It's, it's pretty big cuz that's sort of a, a a a large milestone for us, I think. Is getting the website up and going. It's basically going to be a hub for everything Battleforge gaming related. And it'll just grow from there. Like you said, it's just sort of the bare bones now, but we can build on that. Exactly. It's really cool. Exactly. But yeah, that's that's about enough about us. I think we've got our special guest here. So Alex, how long have you been hobbing for? Uh, it'd be going on. I've been on and off a little bit over the course of the, the years because of life. Yes. Yeah. Um, but yeah, recently I've been going for about two years now. Two years straight? Yeah. Yeah. Um, but before but that. Overall, like, probably about eight years. Eight years. Eight years. Yeah. Um, I feel like it's more than that. I reckon. I reckon you reckon it's, it's more, longer? Yeah, I think it's more than that, dude. I was trying to figure out what number it was. And I was like, oh, it's I've, not more than 10, but I reckon it's around eight. I reckon it's more than eight because I think when I met you, I had been doing the whole, I'd been doing the hobby for a little bit. I got in at sixth edition, which was 12 years ago. Oh, okay. And I remember meeting you relatively early in in like my hobby journey when you came in with your um, Ultramarines. Yeah. Specifically remember you coming in and painting the inside of, a, it was a Razorback or a Rhino. Yeah, Rhinos. And I was just like, this guy is crazy. <laughs> like he's literally painting the inside of Rhinos. It was um, <laughs> impressive. It was impressive. Uh, cool. Nice. I'm just getting some notifications there. So do you want to speak to Dean? Do you want to get him on the podcast? No, nah, not particularly. <laughs> no. All right. Sorry, Dean. You're not, you're not going to get your phone answered at the moment. <laughs> but yes. Sorry, I did interrupt. So yeah, I, I think it's more than eight years, dude, yeah. because twelfth edition, uh, sixth edition was 12 years ago. So I reckon it's probably closer to 10, man. Oh, I reckon right. it's to- closer to 10. Yeah. And you had some Ultramarines painted yeah. before you came in, like a fair amount of them too. Yeah, I reckon it was four 10-man tactical squads yeah. that I'd had fully painted before I even wanted to step foot in any of the stores to play. Yeah. Um, and, yeah, like that that's something I've always seen myself. I have to have something fully painted before I even look at playing someone because it's more about painting for me than playing. Yeah. Um, so you're, you're definitely the painter side of painting versus gaming? Oh, 100%. Gaming. Yeah tends to take a big toll out of me, like just cognitively. Like, yeah. Um, just whereas, mentally exhausted after yeah. the game. I find the same thing. Like I can do I can do a smallish game and, and do one of them and I'm sort of okay. But I remember I did two – I think I did two in one day and I was – against you. Yeah. You and I played one. Ended we played two fried. games. And by the end of it, I was – yeah, I was um, I was pretty pretty exhausted. Still had a stream that night but – <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so definitely on the painting side of things. And was Ultramarines the first ever faction you painted? Yeah, so going back a bit further, um, I stepped in when I was probably six or seven. Yeah. Um, this first, is your first First encounter. ever in, uh, introduction to the hobby itself. Um, and I got, uh, I remember it was the die, die cast, the metal Marnie's Calgar figure with the honor guard. Yeah. Um, never painted it, just built it. Put it together, played with the army soldiers at home because wasn't confident going anywhere. I was a little kid. Yeah. Um, at which point later on I ended up going to one of the stores and going, oh, you know, can I play a small game with someone? Um, which then What age what age do you think you were around? Probably eleven or twelve. Yeah, right. Um, at which point I was introduced to Necrons. Which I've got a diehard hatred you, for you, still. You hate Necrons. I hate Necrons. <laughs> you hate Necrons. Um, and it's because of the one guy who's like, oh, yeah, I'll, I'll beat this little kid into a, into a little puddle on the ground. Wait, this is your first game ever? First introduction to whatever. No way. Um, at which point I'm like, yep, I don't want to look at this anymore. Oh. I'm done with it. Until I was 21, 22. That's heartbreaking. <laughs> <laughs> there are unfortunately some people out there that, that do play like that. Like they just don't. They just a win's a win, you know. They just want to get a win, and unfortunately, you're on the the receiving end of that. And yeah. 
Yeah, I, I remember you painting up the Ultramarines and you you started putting Necron models on your bases. That's how much you had. <laughs> yeah, he asked, you, remember when I painted Necrons and you're like, hey, I'm going to paint one of them as your Necrons? Yeah. <laughs> I, was like, I was like, go for it, man, go for it. <laughs> Justin's like sitting there in the corner like, oh, this guy really doesn't like Necrons. Nah, nah. <laughs> Still oh, have wow. a bit of a hatred for him, but yeah, it's yeah. easing as time goes. Ah, oh, that's all right. It's good to have a bit of rivalry. I mean, Ultramarine shouldn't ever like like Necrons anyway, so <laughs> that's fine. That's crazy. So yeah, so that was your first first sort of stint. Yeah, and then where did you go from there? Um, from there um, was when I met Judd at the store when I picked up Ultramarines once again, and but I was hardcore painting them. Um, and from there I. Built, I think it was about a 3,000, 4,000 point list. Wow. Um, Arm, Armageddon levels back yeah. then. Um, and from that, I moved on to Adeptus Mechanicus. Yes, that match. Did you, how much of your Ultramarines did you end up painting? Um, I remember there was, it was a sizable force yeah. when, whenever we played games uh, at Games Workshop. But how much did you actually, do, do you think you got painted back then? Not now. Yeah. Like, I, I don't know what the points would be now, but. Well, I easily had the, I had assault marines, the firstborn tactical squads. I reckon I probably ended up with about sixty of those painted up. Yeah. Um, Marnie's Cowgar, the Honor Guard. Did you paint? You painted Rabute, didn't you? I did paint Rabute. Yeah. Um, I had a Storm Raven, and a plethora of uh, armored units. Yeah. Like rhinos, Razorbacks, and oh, Predators. I remember Kronos yeah. running around. <laughs> That's right, Kronos. Every time, blow his tank up and then there'd be this little model running around. <laughs> Wacky with a servo arm. Yep. Yeah, that's that's an art. that's unreal painting to that level. That's did you were you painting between that that sort of like eleven, twelve year age and then when, when you ran into Juddy at Games Workshop Ringwood, were you painting instance? I uh, no. So not really. One year I was just oh I've got a plethora of spending money to waste on plastic crack yeah <laughs> um and i just got back into the hobby i'm like i want to do this to you know waste some time on weekends get out of my head get out of work just focus on something else yeah um and yeah i just started painting wow that's that's full on that's that's impressive and do you remember because obviously you you came into contact with with ultramarines really young do you remember the second time around, did you just go straight back to them because you already knew them or was there a reason behind well, picking them again? It was just because they were the poster boys. Yeah. So it's yeah. what everyone sees when they see Warhammer. They yeah. see the Ultramarines. Yeah, everyone remembers them. Yeah, yep. definitely. Definitely. Yeah, because I guess you went in the opposite direction. Well, my my first, my first Space Marines were actually Dark Angels because that's what the Dark Vengeance box was. But then over time, I just, I don't know why I went towards the Blood Angels. It was just, maybe it was the Sanguinary Guard or something. Caught my eye and I was like, I want to paint those guys. And then just expanded from that one unit, which is probably something we're going to touch on later with, with the, uh, the topic of today's podcast of picking stuff you like the look of. And I think that's what attracted me to the Blood Angels was a specific unit. So, and then I just expanded on that. Yeah. Yeah, so, and then after the Ultramarines, you said you went to uh, Adeptus Mechanicus, the ad mech for a while. How long were you painting them for? Um, a fairly short stint comparatively. Um, but you painted a lot of them though. Yeah. Like I've, there's one thing about Alex is when, when you're painting um, at your most optimum, I've never met someone that could paint the quality and the volume you do. Like it is just, it's huge and it's impressive. I might be able to find some of your older work and maybe put it up on some of my stories on both TikTok and and Instagram so people can check it out. They are older pics, so I think they could be quite overexposed with the lighting and stuff, but we might get to the point of taking some photos of your existing work and maybe I can share them on my story. You can start your Instagram up again. We'll see where we go, see if we can, uh, you know, push you into (laughs) doing some social media stuff. It'd be pretty cool. Yeah, that'd be that'd be awesome to see that stuff come through on the story. Um, even just yeah, after the podcast, if there's anything that you can put up, that'd be that'd be cool to see your work. 
Um, on the ad mech. Yes. You're an ad mech boy too, Mike. Yes. Not to the level. Not to the level, Alex. But I mean, you you sort of st- you're starting back into it. Yeah. Have you seen the uh, what are they called? The Sidonian Scatros. Sidonian Scatros. Yeah. Have I? Have you seen the Sidonian Scatros? The, the Stilty Boys. Stilty Boys. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. For those uh, again, for those those watching live on YouTube, we have got a little pick of these guys. So I love them. Yeah. I think they're so cool. Yeah. They're just the most ad mech thing ever. Yeah. Yeah. I, I saw the, I watched the reveal because I was interested in what was coming out. I'd heard the striking scorpions were coming out and I was like, oh, I really want to watch this reveal. And one of the first things they put up was this guy and people in Twitch chat were losing their mind. They're just like, what are Games Workshop doing? It's the stupidest looking thing ever. And obviously... There's, there's a lot of keyboard warriors out there and you're not going to please everyone in the hobby, but I'd argue that the people that reckon it looks stupid aren't even AdMech players because if you're an AdMech player, you know you got some wild-looking stuff in your army. Like that, that, comparatively speaking to other stuff, that fits that fits in to oh, me. 100%. I'd love to see three of those things run around the board and just like sniping people. <laughs> Yeah, heroes. That's right. The, yeah, the Steel Boys. I think I think they're sick as well. I, I think like just looking at that, if that is an ad mech, I don't know. I don't know what is. That's yeah. That's can, so cool. Can we do a? You know the giveaway we're doing. If if someone wins it and they play ad mech, I'll I'll allow two of those instead of a hero model. <laughs> Dublin up. Yeah, two of those if they're out and you can get them and you're an ad mech player. I'll allow that. You can get two of those guys. You just you just want to see more of them out there. I just want to see more of them out there. Yeah, just <laughs> they would ta- look towering over the battlefield and just just ruining people's characters in their units. They would look wicked on the table. Precision is just look. such a good rule. I love it. I yeah. love it. Yeah. Would you, what are your thoughts? If you if you were were still playing Admech, would you would you put some of them in the list? Oh, absolutely. I I think they'd work very fairly well with the um, Iron Striders and the the Dragoons. Yes. Yeah. Sidonian Dragoons. Yeah. Made for them. Sidonian Scatteros? Made for them. Match made in heaven. Yeah. Match made in heaven. Well, I was, I was, it's funny because I was, I was looking it up before uh, and the Sidonian Dragoons, they refer to them as stilts anyway, the the engines that they're, the engine legs that they're on. And I was like, oh, well, maybe Sidonian is something to do with, with stilt, maybe that region of Mars or region what is of- What does Sidonian mean? Plasterers. Sidonian so means plaster. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> You're walking around on stilts. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I I was like doing a bit of a Google because I was curious and Sidonian not spelt the way the Games Workshop spell it because obviously they're tweaking it is actually referring to like a region on Mars, Mar- like our Mars, not the, the Warhammer Mars. And I was like, oh, that's cool. They've kind of tried to tie that in. So there's a region of... Our planet Mars called Sidonia. Yeah. Yeah, according to Google. According to Google. <laughs> well, Google's. So I'm sure someone can fact we're gonna, check we're me on trust that Google. One. We're gonna trust Google. Yeah. But I thought that's kind of a cool to tie it in for the whole admix story and the fact that they're just like that's steampunk. That's steampunk snipers yep. every day of the week. Yeah. <laughs> I think they're cool. If you play admech, I wanna see. Yeah. I don't know if they're gonna be a hero. If they're a hero, I, I wanna see all three slots like you can field three of a unit i want to see all three i can i can see both sides of the conversation though with the like the cool the coolness of them like if you're a if you're an ultramarine player with like these built dudes with jump packs and awesome rifles and you see a guy clumbering in on stilts like a skatari model clumbering in on stilts like you're not that's not necessarily cool to you but if you if you chose admech already yeah like you know what you're getting you're getting guys with pterodactyl wings and yep. all this sort of stuff so yeah you're the you're all, are the same yeah you're all about you're all about stilts <laughs> at that point yeah yeah <laughs> yeah so where are you at where are you at now so you've admec is done you're finished with admec yeah so i actually burnt myself out on the admec force i i did because it was for a tournament at the local games workshop store yeah um that's ringwood for you as well yeah, isn't it yeah yeah, yeah. and um I yeah, I forced myself to paint them day and night for probably a month, a month and a half. Yeah, 
And, yeah, I just, after doing that, I couldn't paint the scheme I was doing on them anymore. I couldn't build another Skitari force. Yeah. And from what from what Jody tells me, when you say day and night, you literally mean day and night. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's like 24-7. Yeah. That's wild. Yeah. How many, do you remember how many you did for the tournament? Yeah, so I had the 10 Vanguard, 10 Rangers, the two Onigas, and I had a back in, I think it was 6th or 7th edition, an outflanking force of the Iron Striders and Dragoons. You and your bloody dune crawlers. I tell you what, Alex would take the piss. He'd be like, do you mind if I put these on a base? And if you said, nah, you don't have to put them on a base, he'd like hang them off buildings and shit. <laughs> For real. And like anyone who's got seen a dune crawler, their base is, I think it's a hundred mil be, round. Yeah, it has to be. It's either a 90 yeah. mil or a hundred mil yeah. round. Takes up a lot of size. When you take a dune crawler off its base, it is so much smaller. Like it looks good on its base. And then you just used to put them in buildings and stuff. And I'd be like, <laughs> oh man, what I leave not put them on a base. <laughs> <laughs> and then, yeah, yeah. What how, you had like three of the Iron Striders, or was it more? I had uh, two Iron Striders, two, two Dragoons. <sighs> I remember you always used to bring them on from the side of the board and yeah. they would just cause absolute havoc. So annoying. <laughs> so annoying, those things. That would have been that would have been impressive to see. Do you, did you keep them? You've still got them. Yeah, right? I've still got that force at home. Definitely still got them. Do you cool. think it's something you'll ever revisit? I think I might take a break from Black Legion, which is what I'm painting currently, and after that maybe try to revisit the Skitari. Because back in the day, like we didn't have the transports, the flyers. Scatteros? Are you gonna get some little Scatteros boys? Potentially. Please. <laughs> I've heard that if he um enters the Oh, if he you could get two of them. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> there you go. Oh, there we go. You've, you've got them back into Admech just like that. I do have a habit of doing that sometimes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I have seen that actually in action. IRL. Black Legion. That's the current project. Yes, and that's a project that I first started probably about four years ago. Yeah. That I then stepped away from the hobby altogether. Yeah. Um just for a break from life really yeah um but yeah black legion i've got a small force that i've started on that for arc that will be attending yeah your arc list is a bit more punchy than mine what's what's in it right now and uh, will, do you think do you think it's something that will change over time or are you set on this i've got the list that i've built that i'm going to commit to and just paint Right. What's um, in what's in the list? So I've got a small force of Abaddon, some yep. five Terminators, um, a Warpsmith, uh, also the Lord Discordant on the Hellstalker, and just a small list of three Forge Fiends. Yeah, I've I've seen what your Forge Fiends do. They're not fun. So you're you're set, you had a Hellbrood in there at one stage. Yeah. So. You're set on this current list with the with the um, Lord Discordant yeah. as well. Yeah, well, I'm still painting up the Hellbrood. Yeah, because I'm batch painting the three Forge fiends with the Hellbrood at the same time. Got ya. Because I'm a bit of a psycho. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Well, I definitely don't do that stuff anymore. <laughs> I I did used to do it, and um, again, that's a that's a burnout type of yeah. situation, which we'll chat about more in the upcoming topic. It's um something which can be beneficial doing the batch painting, but it can do the burnout like you spoke about yeah. with, with the Admech. It's yeah, your list is is uh pretty strong offensively versing it on the tabletop. Those forge fiends can be absolutely terrifying. Yeah, like yeah. chunky I shots. still I still remember when they came out in sixth edition and they were vehicles and I think they had a ballistic skill of four plus and they really weren't that good and it took them a long time before they were actually a decent like model in the tabletop. And I think the last sort of two editions they've actually put in work on the table. So it's cool because they're a fantastic model. I really like the Mauler Fiends too. So yeah. I'd, I'd love to see you do some Mauler Fiends as well. But again, painting three Forge Fiends and then some Mauler yeah. Fiends, that's a lot of work. That's yeah. a lot of work. And on the topic of, of Ark, uh, Alex, have you, have you ever been to Ark before? Oh, never. No, nah, this is... Would that be because you said you've been to a couple of tournaments with Admech and uh, maybe with the Ultramarines as well? Is this going to be one of the bigger tournaments you attend? Oh, this will be the biggest. The biggest, uh, like not a local event, something you know. Yeah, pretty, has, 
as far as I know, the the only tournaments you've been to were the small games workshop ones. Yeah. No sort of like official tournament. No. Yeah. So this will both be yours and my first um outward venture. Outward venture into a, a solo tournament situation. Awesome. We can go in holding hands and wearing Battleforge gaming t shirts. Oh, I wasn't thinking the hands, but <laughs> But yeah, so that's that's cool because it's like a lot of the local guys. It seems like it's going to be their first, their first major tournament, which will be really cool. I'm obviously just going to go and morally support everyone, be everyone's moral support. Probably cut a few hot laps in my ute on sand, around Sandown. Yeah, if- yeah, definitely. I'll I'll just go get takeaway for the boys as as I do. <laughs> but yeah, so that's that's very exciting. That's April. We said. Yeah, I don't know the, the exact date, but I, yeah, like yeah. April, around about six, seven months from now. I I was under the impression that it was January, February. I was always under that impression because f- the last time I actually went and watched one, it was around Australia Day, but obviously things have changed, which is cool for you. It gives you a lot more time. The pressure's sort of off in terms of that yeah. and the pressure's off for me in terms of making a display board because I want that extra four points for, for painted or whatever you whatever that scoring is. Yeah. And are you, are you going to do the display board type? Maybe something a bit more level? basic. Yeah. But because um, I'm still painting the whole list just about. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, I'll do something a bit basic but a bit inspired by what the kind of theme I'm going for with it. Will yeah. Be. Cool. You're not so. putting blood angels on your bases, are you? Maybe some more Necrons. <laughs> <laughs> you, can, you can do Necrons. Just leave my red boys alone. <laughs> Oh, that's classic. But yeah, so essentially the the topic for this whole this whole episode will be uh, how to pick an army, which is really cool because you guys both have a lot of experience in, in a few different armies, and then how to stick to that army to build a, to build and paint a sizable force. Exactly what we're talking about with getting stuff ready for this this tournament and and previous events you guys are going to. Yeah. So yeah, I guess I guess we start at the beginning. And like, how how do you pick an army? If you if you had to pick an army, if you had to go on the Warhammer website and, and pick an army now, what would you be looking for? Well, for me, it's just what looks the coolest in my opinion. Yes. Um. So, what do I like the look of, and what do I feel like? Oh, I'd love to paint this because it'd be sick to look at. Yeah. Yeah. You like the like the colors of it, and yeah. and the the sculpts of the models and and things like that. Justin, are you are you similar opinion there? Yeah, I mean, on stream, I always tell people, anyone that's new to the hobby and is asking questions, go to the website, spend the time to look through the the factions. It does take a long time, but try and pick the thing that really appeals to you in terms of the aesthetics, like you just said, the colors, how they look. After you've been in the hobby a little bit, you can, well, I know I, I can look at a model and know that I'll enjoy painting that model as well and I can know by looking at a model if I won't enjoy painting it. I can still think it's cool, but I know that it's not going to be the most fun. So I tend to steer clear of those type of armies. My my painting is obviously heavy metal inspired, so pushing recess contrast and edge highlight contrast. So I normally go for a power armor type situation, whether that be Tau, Space Marines, a new project which uh, I'll do – Maybe mid next year is the the leading one right now is Aldari with the Wraith host because of that sort of power armor look with the hard edge highlights. So I'm big on pick what you like the look of. If you're into gaming, that's a different story. You might want to look into the rules and the meta and do a lot. That's probably arguably more research in my opinion. I don't think it's the best in terms of painting your army though. If you're if you're picking an army to paint it, just picking something that is meta and rules isn't really going to inspire you to paint it. Unless you're you're a hardcore gamer. If you're like really high tier painter, uh, sorry, a high tier gamer, and you know that these models are going to help you win games because that's your your number one sort of thing to aim for, then you may be inspired to paint it. I can't really comment on that. Someone yeah. who someone who's a someone who's like a, a competitive gamer might be able to answer that question. Does does something with rules make you want to paint it more? Like good rules? 
I don't know. Yeah, where does that motivation come from? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I think definitely for me, just the aesthetic is everything. Like, yeah. I guess I guess that's all. That's going to be a common opinion of, of most painters, I would have to think. Yeah. But I was, it's interesting you say about you already know before you've even painted the model whether you're going to enjoy painting it because of yeah. it must be different features of the, the sculpt or... Is yeah, it, whether the intricacy or the uh, like the details on it, does something have a lot of fabric? Does something have a lot of skin? I can paint skin and fabric, but I know that like my happy place is painting power armor. So the more hard edged power armor there is, the happier I am. The custode that I'm painting right now, although they're the elite of the elite, the blade champion actually has quite a lot of fabric on it. It does have power armor, but it's a lot of it's like hidden by cloth. So it's not that I don't enjoy painting the model. It's just I know that I would enjoy painting a space ring more than the custode or custody rather, custody. And do you, do you, Alex, do you find the same sort of thing with – do you have a preference over painting skin or armor, uh, fabrics and things like that? I I've obviously – my reintroduction to the hobby, I was a power armor boy through and through. Um, but then when I entered the Admech, I experimented a lot more with the cloths because they've all got the robes yeah, and the stuff. Robes, yeah. um, and from there, it was just leveling up to skins and all that. But um, for me, I just like to experiment. Yeah. So if it's something new, I want to do it. Cool. So you, you like the new... Whatever's whatever's new new sculpts and stuff like that will pique your interest yeah. a little bit. Yeah, cool. That's pretty interesting actually, because I don't think you're Justin. I don't think you're as like worried whether it's something completely new. I'm I usually I'm pretty safe when it comes to painting. Like I'll branch out and I'll do stuff if it's on the model, but I won't go and select a model to specifically test myself. That's just that's just me, you know. I th- I, like I, most of my stuff is inspired by codex painting. So I'll look at the codex or the, the, the data slates and try and copy that with my little, with a little twist on it. I won't really branch out too far and try anything extreme. Like I won't try a chrome paint or any of those iridescent paints and stuff. My, my painting's normally pretty safe. I just try and paint a high quality safe model. <laughs> yeah. But it's interesting, like Alex, even though you're saying that, you really like the new stuff. You seem to manage to stick to whatever project you actually finally decide on. Um, is that something you you do like you're very conscious of when you're when you're picking an army? Yeah. So if if I'm going to commit to something, I'm going to commit to it. I'm not yeah. going to say, oh, I'm going to do something and not do it. Yeah. Like, and that's just more a moral thing. Yeah. And so that's come through into the hobby as well. Yeah. Um, like if I'm going to paint. A seventeen fifty point admec list. I'm going to paint the admec list. Yep, you hold yourself to your, your my own like, word. Your own word. Yeah, I'm yeah. big on that too, man. I'm big on that as well. Yeah, that's a that's a cool way to go about it because it's. I know for you guys, it seems like it's something that's quite natural. Um, but I'm from the outside looking in. It's a it's quite daunting to look at, you know, a seventeen hundred point list. Totally, and it, it and, still is. It still is being in the hobby and being that type of guy, like. I think Alex and I are very similar in terms of like committing to a project. Like we'll we'll be like, cool, I'm gonna do, I'm gonna do a two thousand points of Blood Angels, and I'll, I'll do it because to me, if if I make a promise to myself, I, I'm I'm gonna follow through with that. But it doesn't mean it's not daunting. I still like when I move on to my next project and I'm gonna do Aldari. It's still gonna be super daunting, but the excitement of painting some new models helps you to start that. Yeah. So, but like, I don't think people should uh, think it's it's easy by um, any means for both Alex and I. It's still very daunting. I know there's a, a a big job ahead of me, but I always look forward to that the end goal. I know what the end goal is, and it's having an awesome army on the tabletop, and it's just one of the most rewarding feelings. The sense of achievement you get from having like. 1500 to 2000 points fully painted on the tabletop that you've done from start to finish. It's, it's, it's got a little bit of blood, sweat and tears vibe about it. Like there's huge amounts of effort, but at the same time, when you finish those models, like I've got stuff in my display cabinet 
that I look at and I remember painting it, but all I ever think of is the end goal and how good it feels to have that end goal. I remember painting my snake girls and it being an hour to highlight every single um, small snake girl just on their scales and there was 35 of them, but, and I know I didn't overly enjoy it. What got me through was the end goal and that's all I sort of think of now. That looks cool as in my cabinet. I remember it wasn't the best, but it looks amazing. Yeah, you barely you barely even remember the bad stuff. The bad yeah. stuff. Yeah, yeah. That's cool. Do you find Alex of you do you find that you set milestones at all when you're trying to build a larger force? Are you are you either okay, I gotta get a thousand points or anything like that? Or are you just are you just straight for the whatever the end goal was? So I I use the tools that I've learnt from the years of hobby as so i suppose you could call them setting the milestones because like i'll be like okay first off i'm going to chunk off the forge fiends and paint all three of them up all at once and like yeah it's taken me four months at the moment but i'm going to get there and that's because at the end of that i know okay there's a quarter of my list done yeah does it help i mean does it help knowing that you've already done that process before and it works you get there you get to that end goal does that like reinforcing your methods that you're like okay if i do it this way x amount of time from now i will have this completely painted force yeah and i want like i'm not particularly a fast painter either like judd um but like yeah like knowing that i'll get this done and it's going to be good gets me there yeah it's the um self-gratification of yeah i'm put my chin up over everyone else i've done this yeah, yeah i i stuck it out i got there yeah. yeah do you think do you think your first army was the hardest one to paint everyone after that you knew you had the conviction yeah. to finish an army so then the following ones you're like well if i set a goal i know that i can achieve it yeah uh, that's actually a good point like absolutely like with the smurfs yeah like getting the first 10 man squad done the second 10 man squad done and all right, like this is working for me. I'm going to keep trying to do it the same way so I know that it's going to work. Yeah. Because I, I know when I did my Blood Angels and my Tower, I didn't necessarily have a goal. Like now I'm now I'm building lists and I'm painting towards them. Back then I would just stick to that army, but I would just pick models I liked, which was really good for my painting. We've spoken about before. That's super good for your motivation. It's picking the stuff you really like. Won't necessarily give you the, the best... Uh, gaming experience on the tabletop because like there's no real optimization to it but in terms of like painting towards that army it, it'll just keep you motivated because I, I, I painted a heap of crisis suits at the time because i thought they were the best thing ever yeah they, i don't even i can't remember them being overly amazing in the sixth edition they might have been okay i just painted them because i liked them which is um that whole picking models you like the the look of in order to paint them. Another thing for me when I'm picking my armies, because I've done multiple armies, is picking a different colour. So I've got a display cabinet and I try and make sure that I don't pick the same colours over and over and over because you'll find even though you're painting a different faction, let's say I'm painting my Blood Angels and now I'm painting that new Farsight Enclave scheme, which they've changed to Mephist and Red. Although Tau's cool and they play different, it's still red armour with hard edge highlights you're basically painting the same thing again and you can get into this sort of zone of feeling comfortable and painting that same color over and over like you want to do it from faction to faction and i think it's probably something you want to avoid doing because you might get what you got with the ad mech and burn out but you've burned out over two armies just because you're painting one color so i like to try and pick different colors if yeah. i was ever to go into Horus heresy i couldn't pick uh, what the Imperial Fist because I've got yellow snake girls. So whenever I'm picking armies, I like to pick different colors. That's why Ulthway Biltan, which is the uh, castle and green, is sort of my leading uh, selection for the next p particular army that I might be doing. Yeah. And did you find the same thing? Because you, you've you gone, you've changed it up quite a bit. So you, you like, did you find... Was that a conscious decision to 
paint admit because you knew they were going to be way different than the ultramarines and paint black legion because that's quite different again from the admic well there, there were a couple of segues in between there in terms of what led to so with the black legion um i actually did archeon in between and that's where the black armor went and inspired me to go oh yeah i like chaos now so stuff space marines i'm trader now that's a hell of a single model <laughs> to, paint to get inspired <laughs> for the black legion archeon they ever chosen I think that's I – th- I still think it's Games Workshop's largest plastic model, I think. It's absolutely insane, that thing. But that's what got you into Black Legion yeah. was the Slaves to Darkness. Yeah. Yeah. Crazy. Um, and there's a lot of um, – and we haven't touched on it much, but Forge World was a big inspiration for me, a lot of the resin models. And that's where I tried a lot of different things because with the plastic models – there's certain details that you wouldn't get that you get in the Forge World upgrade kits. Yeah. Which, you know, if it's as simple as a rhino door, yeah. you're testing out some weathering effects on it because the rhino depth door's got all this detail that doesn't have it on before. Yeah. 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 And did Because I've noticed Justin speak about it with his like TikTok lives and things like that. He, he'll do like a palette cleanser type model between massive projects is that t- kind of what you're talking about with the forge world stuff like you'll see something that interests you from there and you'll just grab that one-off model won't necessarily be going into any one of your current projects but it's just something you've that piqued your interest and got you motivated to paint yeah and those would be generally the product projects that if i don't finish it i wouldn't feel bad for abandoning it yeah um yeah. which would happen quite often like i did a I did one of the knights that they've just turned plastic, the lancers. I did that when it was resin. Um, I got myself a warhand titan that took forever to build and base coat. Yeah. Um, but I'd also use terrain as a palette cleanser, which was always my go-to. You love your terrain. Yeah. Um, it's one thing you and I don't have in common is terrain. I just absolutely hate it. Yeah, I, even, even I know that about you, just not a terrain. <laughs> like nah. this, this display. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, man, I'm going to put that off to like the last month. Yeah. So you're, do you think in terms of staying motivated to paint, so we, we've obviously sort of crossed the, uh, the, the area of picking your army, yeah? In terms of staying motivated to paint your army, Archeon, Archeon was essentially your test model. Yeah. Which is still mind blowing. Like, <laughs> paint paint a chaos legionary for your test model, my guy. Yeah. But do you think do you think test models help you stay motivated? For, oh. for me personally, I I find painting my test model just allows me to trust that process. So you know when you get to those stages when your models don't look fantastic, sort of when it's just got the base coats on it, and then. You, you you know that if you follow through what the rest of the model is going to look like, do you, do you find that with, with that helped you? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Obviously, Archeon's a bit different yeah. to, to the other Black Legion stuff, but do you think – do you think w- – would you recommend for people to complete a test model start to finish? I, I'm big on it. Is that yeah. something you'd be – Oh, absolutely. Like um, we did it when Primaris first got released. Um. We did one intercessor model each. Yeah, I did a yeah. what did I do? Raptor. A raptor. That's right. Yeah. What, what did you do? Kakaradon. You need to <laughs> You need to stop painting your Black Legion right now. <laughs> I, we're, ta- we're, we're talking about sticking to projects. Drop your Black Legion and continue with those Kakaradons, dude. They are some of the coolest models I've I've seen. You you your, the way you do your armies is very different to mine. So you painted up like a five-man squad. Yeah. And then what was the next thing? A repulsor. Yeah. And but you're, <laughs> <that's> the, <laughs> yeah, you start with like these small steps and then just take like this massive leap. You're like, well, I've painted five uh, intercessors. Naturally, the next step would be the largest model in the range. Yeah. I've got to get the big tra- transport for them. <laughs> yeah, the belief, the belief to go... Dive head first and like that is just awesome. I think from from like obviously my perspective, it's so crazy from someone that's painted nothing essentially to listen to you guys that have painted like substantial forces. I really get hung up on that. Like 
am I actually going to get there to any sizable force? But it seems like the, even though the test model, that gives you a little bit of trust in yourself, a little bit of confidence. Yeah. And then once you've actually made some kind of sizable force and that just reinforces all that belief in yourself to continue to keep painting and you will eventually get there. Yeah, I think I think if you if you balance um, the amount you paint, so you don't do the burnout, where you don't try and paint like like um, probably too much in a short amount of time. I think if you balance it, the the more you paint can motivate you. So the the big thing for me is finishing units and leaving them in front of me when I'm actually painting. And I think, uh, yeah, if you if you can manage to to have a, a good balance between like uh, I guess committing time to the project as well as a bit of time off so you don't burn yourself out that that can definitely help but you need to this is the this is the big thing right we can we can talk about all these fancy techniques when it comes to painting but ultimately it's committing time to painting your army there's only one there's two ways you can paint your army or get your army painted it's commission painted and then you putting in the time to paint that army. And you can sugarcoat her as much as you want. Oh, like I'm big on motivating people to paint their armies. It's it's the, the largest thing. It's the the um, the thing I, I want people to do the most. But when it comes down to it, you need to put the time and effort in to paint that army. And you need to you need to set that time aside to do it. There's, and I get that there's a lot of People are busy, they've got kids and commitments and all that type of stuff. But if you can manage to turn it into somewhat of habit and you've got to spare half an hour, 45 minutes, maybe every three days or something like that, make sure you paint. Set that time to paint and actually do it. And and the, the, even if it's small amounts, chipping away your army, you, you'll get your army done. Because you might be at a, a stage where you're like, man, I'm really not enjoying this. I always do it. I get up to like capes and stuff and I'm like, I'm not really looking forward to this, but I'll just try and chip away at it. And eventually you get past that little hurdle and then onto the motivation again. Yeah. Yeah. And I think definitely by the sounds of things, the more you paint, the more confidence you have that your project's going to get finished. Like it's so, it's so much less daunting once you must have like a couple of squads painted sitting in front of you, like you said, on your desk. Yep where you can see what you've done to keep adding to them would feel far less daunting than even that that first single model. Yeah, and put put the models away that you're not painting. I, I did a thing years ago. I bought a heap of tactical marines and I think I built 40 firstborn marines and I was going to paint up Salamander's chapter. I built them all and I was like, right, let's do this. And I put all 40 in front of me and I painted one and I'm like, I can't do this. And I pushed them into a shoebox. <laughs> And it just put me off that army altogether. If you're going to do a mass build, feel free to do it. Put most of it in the cupboard, out of sight, out of mind, and just work on one squad at a time. And if, if you've got intercessors, don't paint 10. Of, like I know you do batch painting, but yeah. I think a big thing for me motivational-wise is doing one model at a time. You do one model at a time. It might not be – in terms of painting the, the models overall, it might not be quicker, but – in terms of your motivation of actually wanting to paint, you'll act, you'll paint more. You'll find you you'll actually paint more. So, I like the one at a time. I burnt myself out on some crisis suits one time, <laughs> painting nine at once. <laughs> <laughs> Do you find Alex with the batch painting is is that kind of is that your setup now? You you just you do mostly batch painting, yeah. The smaller units, uh, not even small units, like I said with the forge fiends. Um, True. <laughs> And like for me, it's always been about the challenge that I, if I can make it harder for myself to get to the end, the next time I need to do that hard thing, it becomes easier to do. Okay. Um, You're and, sort of an eat the vegetables first kind yeah, of guy. Yeah. I'd rather just, <laughs> you know, do all the hard work and get it done. Yeah. Um, so that the next time there's hard work, the hard work becomes easier. Gotcha. It's like do everything first rather than do everything last. Yeah. Nice. I don't, yeah, I don't mind that approach. Like that would seem to, because you're, when you're starting a new project, obviously all your motivation is just at the start 
anyway. Like you have a ton of motivation because it's new. Yeah. So tackling the harder stuff sooner probably makes a lot of sense in that regard um, because as you slowly, if you do lose a little bit of motivation, you're like, you'll look back and you're like, oh, I've already done the, yeah. the harder stuff anyway. So that's a, that's a cool idea with it. Is there any other little little tricks you've learned to steal yourself for that sort of challenge? Is that, or is that something you've, you find you've grown up with? Oh, I actually allow myself to have breaks. Like I'll take, if I end up going, all right, I need to just not paint for a week. I'll just put the brush down, do other things that I need to get done. So I'm, I've cleansed that. Oh, I really don't want to paint chaos trim for the next two weeks. Yeah. And I'll just put the brush down. I'll be, when I come back, I'm like, all right, I've had a break. I've got that motivation back to be able to do what I've been doing. Yeah. How long How long do you find these breaks you usually give yourself? A week to two weeks. Yeah. Not longer than that. Yeah. Um, because otherwise um, what's happened before is I'll end up just stepping out and going, no, I don't want to touch another plastic model ever again. Yeah. Because I want to do what I want to do in my life. Yeah. And I don't have the time to make time. If that yeah. Makes sense. It's a, yeah. Yeah. That definitely comes into a, a, a big part of it for people, I think. Is, is making that time. But I mean, the beautiful thing about this hobby and we've seen it with myself and, and Mark is you can come back at any point. The hobby's going to be there. Yeah. Um, so yeah, there is, that, that pressure is sort of gone. From my perspective, like I'm not worried about that sort of pressure. It's, it's trying to keep, it's kind of drive that initial kick to get me started and to get my project rolling, which is what I think I'm really interested in overcoming is and then then obviously yeah building up that that's that steel that that drive to to complete something like a thousand points two thousand points type yeah. of thing so yeah it's really cool listening to your your perspective on that because yeah especially doing it the way you do it <laughs> <laughs> it's a combination of dedication and motivation yeah that's what it is yeah yeah so yeah and i think yeah, for me, if I can get something like 500 points, something that's sort of usable, you can do skirmishes with and stuff like stuff like that. That would that would just really make it that much easier to f- do the next 500. You know what I mean? And yeah. Hopefully that that's that, the that's the thing though. Yeah. Yeah. You build that 500 point skirmish, and then all of a sudden five uh, thousand points doesn't look that daunting. Yeah. And then from there, 1500 doesn't look that daunting. And then from there, you got your 2k army. Yeah. And once you got a 2K army, you can paint whatever you want from that that faction. You can just be like, oh, cool. I don't even know if the Castellans are, are any good, the Castellan robots, but I like how they look. So I've got my 2,000 points. I can, I'll can i just paint them up. And for your, for your Black Legion at the moment, are you did you pick that list with Ark in mind at all or is that? I believe he picked yeah. it in mind of just removing blood angels from the board <laughs> yeah. yeah yeah well i mean blood angels are going to be there so it's probably smart <laughs> <laughs> it does it pretty good it does it pretty good have you guys played yet yeah yeah, yeah we've had a couple of test games yeah. how'd yeah. that go one one we're one one aren't we Ooh. yeah yeah oh it might be a bit different now though with the new space marine codex because the oath of moment changed from reroll all failed hits and wounds to just Failed hits. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. But luckily my list has got a lot of twin links, so it sort of balances. It, it didn't yeah. really matter on, on some of that stuff. So yeah. Yeah. We'll we'll end up playing another game. Yeah. We'll end up playing another game. Hopefully you guys play at Ark. That'd be cool. Well, well, I could just start grudging everyone I know. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if they accept grudges, but I could grudge Alex. I could grudge uh Ray. <laughs> I'll, I'll grudge everybody. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to lose, but. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, that's, I mean, it'd be cool to see. It'd be like by the sounds of it, the the size, the sort of forces you guys are putting out to be, the Forge Fiends would be sick. Yeah. That would be, They're absolutely brutal. Yeah. They're brutal. Have you got much, did you say you've fully painted them or that that's what you're working on right now? Well, like this morning before I come here, um, I was just washing all the gold trim. So I'm ready to lay that back up, highlight it, and that should be it, except for some maybe glow effects. Right. So, so Abaddon's done, yeah? No. So I just started straight off with the Forge Fiends. 
Why am I thinking you've painted stuff? I do. I've got um. Do you paint the Lord Discordant? I got the Lord Discordant. That's painted. Harkin, um, Master of Possession, uh, Brass Scorpion. That's right. Yeah. So you, yeah, you you're on your way. Yeah. That's good as. That's very cool. You are you pretty comfortable with April? Do you think you'll be have the list that you want done by then? Absolutely. Yeah. I'm um, like going from the Forge Fiends to the Five Man Terminator Squad. Like. <laughs> yeah. It's quite a down step. Yeah. Yeah, as far as yeah, as far as demand. Yeah, <laughs> and time commitment as well. Yeah, hundred percent. And when I'm trying to keep my motivation to to stick to my armies, I like to pick the units. Your 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 selection of what you're going to paint is different to mine. Mine is oh, I suppose it's similar. Mine is I'm going to paint the stuff first that I know I'm not going to enjoy as much as the other stuff. So I like getting the the battle line stuff ready, the the like the basic troops, and then you can work on the cool stuff later, and just like reward yourself with little like heroes or a brutalis or any of that type of stuff. So that's what I do. Like I've got four, I've got four battle line units in my army. So I started with the two intercessor units to get them finished, and then rewarded myself with a little hero, and then like went back to a transport just to um to keep my motivation up because I know that my motivation drops a little bit when I have to paint like a a transport or something. I've got the dedication to keep painting, but you paint quicker when you're motivated, as is evidence on my last couple of streams. Whenever Tiny or uh, CRX jump on there and try and make me bet, <laughs> they do it all the time. <laughs> There's not going to be any bets anymore. No more. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, well, hopefully those guys hear it. I'm pretty sure they're both in the stream at yeah, the moment. Yeah, probably. probably. <laughs> no bets, guys. No, no bets. bets. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's it's kind of cool even like from my perspective, like you guys being what I would say veterans in the hobby, seeing how you still manage, like you're actively managing your motivation by the way you structure your painting, yeah. uh, your painting progress. Like for you saying, because you, you're saying you'll start with something fairly – Fairly basic, fairly yeah. straightforward, like yep. a, just an intercessor or something like that. And then if you find that your motivation is dropping, you'll get something a bit more exciting, a bit more that you, that you personally know that you're going to enjoy painting yeah, more. That's it. That's Yeah, it's all it's all about balance. And I think for those that are new to the hobby, that might not be as obvious as it is for you guys. Like, am I going to know that I don't like painting Skatari ranges before I start painting them type of thing. So it's kind of like something that you, you yeah, must think, pick up over time. Yeah, I think some of that comes with time. But I, I think it's almost as simple as just like picturing like a little sort of heart monitor which goes up and down, you know. And, and the the best spot is to like stay in the middle or go up high. You, what you don't want to do is get to the point where it gets so low that you're flatline and then you no longer want to do that that army anymore. Yeah. So you, if you know you're getting really low, because you can feel it, like you you know when you're like, man, I just really don't enjoy this, place it to the side, pick something else up from the army that you like, start painting that, get your motivation back and then chip away back at that unit that you, you weren't overly excited with or build something from the same army too because that's still progress towards that army. I like to build as I go. So I'll build, paint, build, paint, build, paint. I won't do the big full build because... I don't game unless it's painted. So if, if you're gaming, if you're wanting to game, then it's a different story. You're going to want to build that army so you can play with it. Alex, do you, are, you, are you building at all? Like, or are you similar process to Judd where it's build, paint, build, paint? So I'll go through, I'll buy everything that I need for whatever force I'm building at the time. I'll build everything in sub-assemblies ready to paint and then from there I'll just start painting. Okay, wow. Yeah. So you you yeah you do it systematically where you, you get it, build you it. build it, and then you, you it's painting all in yeah. all in from there. Wow, that's a cool way to do it. It's cool to hear the the differences between the two. You don't you do you enjoy the building process? I enjoy the building process more than I enjoy the painting process. Yeah, but the painting process I enjoy the end result more than I enjoy the building process. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. Yeah, where you're at with the Forge Fiends must be pretty fun right now. Yeah. <laughs> well, if I can see the end line. Yeah, yeah, right. Yeah, yeah, you're right at that end point. Yeah, that's right. And it, looking back on your other big projects, is it similar to Justin? What do you think? Do you remember those really tough, really 
trying models where you were losing motivation or is it more just like you just look at the end result now? Oh, I do remember them because that's what I keep in mind when I'm doing the next project. So if I struggled with layering up a cloak, I'm going to remember, all right, if I do it this way, it's going to save me a bit of extra time here or I'll do it all at once so that I know, okay, I can do it all at once, get it out of the way and I won't have to worry about it. Yeah. So I'll learn from the things that I struggle with. Yeah. Yeah. So you're, yeah. So you're, act, you're actively modifying your system yeah. so that you can, you know, you're not going to like this next part. So you just smash it out all in one. And then, yeah. and then it's all sort of plain smooth sailing from there. Yeah. Cause you, you try to adapt to what yeah. you struggle with so that you can get it done. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's cool to hear that, that even, even with like monstering through these large forces, you still, you still built like working on the, your processes. Yeah. 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 That's, that's I, th- I think the big thing to take away from painting the armies is it can come across as easy for, for Alex and myself, but it's, it's, it's really not like we still put in the same amount of time everyone else puts in, if not more. Yeah. Um, you just got to stick to it. Yeah. It's not like you guys are, Waving your waving your brushes over models and they're just getting done like nah, that. I nah. wish. <laughs> <laughs> I don't. I see, but I don't think you would. I don't think you. I don't think you'd appreciate your models as much. No. Is if you painted them quicker, I think you wouldn't have the same appreciation as the end result you do now. I, I, I often think about it. I'm like sitting there. I'm like, oh man, I wish I could just have this army done. But you'd just be like, it just wouldn't be the same That'd feeling. Be too easy. Yeah. 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 And yeah, I mean, for you, it sounds like you've. Alex, you've sort of created that mindset that the the harder the challenge is, the you, better it is. The better it is, yeah, yeah. Which is a cool. I like that mindset. That's a, that's a really cool mindset. You like putting that challenge to yourself. Yeah, it's lucky you got that mindset, mate. You've got a lot of admac to do. Yeah, I, <laughs> I, I like I like the mindset. I didn't say I've got that mindset, <laughs> but yeah, no, that's that's good. And yeah, like you said, uh, Justin, it's it's daunting, but the process it, you do get there in the end there yeah. is there is a there is light at the end of the tunnel you do make it yeah and it's the most like I, I i honestly hope that anyone who picks the hobby up at least once in their hobby sort of journey does themselves a favor and paints an army because i promise you you will the the sense of achievement you get from it is like nothing else and it'll make you want to do a second army it just will absolutely yeah well obviously it's it's definitely been like that for both of you guys with multiple forces uh is one alex one has one been more rewarding than the the other or you got a favorite out of the out of the three you're working on or have worked on the black legion i think will be obviously because i've learned from painting the more you paint the more you paint yeah um so Black Legion will be top shelf for me, but the Ultramarines are still the bread and butter for me. They got the, your, they they got a spot in your heart. Yeah, um, it's where I learned the most. Yeah, um, it's the first time I highlighted. The first time I base coated a whole army. First um, time you painted the inside of a tank. Well, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> and I'll keep doing that from now on. I don't think I've asked you, Justin. Is is there a favorite for you from from the cabinet of, uh, of the for forces? A while, for a while, it was the Daughters of Cain. Um, they held a they held a, a spot in my heart for a long time. It was just the 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 period of in my life. I don't know. There was something about that. I was just like really set at that time. Um, but now it's the Blood Angels. It's yeah. the Angels. Yeah. And they and they're just getting they're like for for a while it was the Daughters of Cain and then it was Blood Angels even and now they're just the the more models I paint for the Blood Angels they just keep going up. Like the Captain was just. I don't know. He's doing stuff for me. The Smash Captain? Smash Captain. Yeah. Just so cool. It's making me want to do more and more Blood Angel stuff. And after the Impulsor, which I painted the second Impulsor, I was just like, oh, I just want to get this list done. Now I'm back. Now I'm back in the Blood Angels. That's that motivation thing, you know, going up and down. Yeah, it's a bit of a roller coaster. Yeah. Smash Captain. We're up here. We're, we're yeah. up here. Let's see if we yeah. can keep going along. You're ready to batch paint. No. <laughs> 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 no, that's that's unreal. Yeah, it's 
it's very, very cool getting to chat with you guys about this sort of stuff because not everyone gets there and it's a shame because like you said and, and yeah, Alex, I mean, you must feel the same way. It's, it must be such a great feeling having the armies you've painted and also having the promise of, of this Black Legion army that will probably be your highest quality yeah. force of that size. Like, yeah, is, is that kind of the same thing? Like you'd recommend finishing an army for... Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Like not only for your own self-gratification but for people to go, that looks sick. Yeah. Oh, I good always, work. Yeah, I always yeah. want my opponent to leave and be like, that's that's like the coolest army I've versed. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, how good would that be? That would be, that'd be pretty rad. Yeah. Do you think, I mean, have you guys looked into Ark at all? Is, do you think the, the painting quality is going to be up there for the forces? Well, I'd, I'd heard rumors the the last arc I went to was years ago. I'm talking like six or seven years ago. And the painting was good. Like this is going to come across so arrogant. I'm, <laughs> it's definitely, I'm not trying to be arrogant when it comes to this. The, the painting, the painting was good. There was some, there was some standout armies. I have heard rumors recently that the painting quality had dropped at arc. Now I could be completely wrong. This is just rumors that I've heard. I haven't been there. It's just the rumors. Uh, Lockie came home the other night and was like, Dave Colwell's going to ARC. So for those that don't know Dave Colwell, he is on Instagram. He's an absolutely amazing painter. I'd say arguably Australia's best miniature painter. Like if he went to Golden Demon, he would just like, he would smash it. Wow. I think Lockie's correct. David Colwell probably is going there, but he's going for the painting portion of it. So there's like just the arc open, which is strictly painting because I don't think he paints armies. <laughs> if he does, then um, man, I want to see his army because yeah. it'll just be one of a kind. Like, But I don't. I, I think he's just going for the arc open. So I guess time will tell when we go in six months, we can see the armies and we'll undoubtedly take a bunch of photos and some videos and stuff and post them up so people can get a look at them. Yeah, hopefully we can give everyone a a good taste of what ARC is like if we do if a little they've vlog been there. type of thing. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. <laughs> Something like that. Especially since yourself's going as well, Alex. Yeah. It would be cool to get shots of your your Black Legion on the table. That'll be on hopefully matching up against some Necrons or, or at the very least <laughs> Justin. <laughs> Just give me a break, guys. <laughs> <laughs> Just anyone. I got a verse. I got a verse. Alex's brutal plasma like forge fiend army, and then and then Lockie bugs me for games with these terminators that absolutely just annihilate things as well. Can I please just verse something on my level? <laughs> yeah, someone that's there to have fun, surely. <laughs> that's the whole nah. idea behind that. Yeah. <laughs> nah, it sounds yeah, it sounds like it should be a really cool event. So yeah, really stoked that you're going to be there as well. Obviously, I'll be there watching from the sidelines. I have some BFG tops. You can order them somewhere now. Yeah, straight uh, straight from BattleforgeGaming.com. Nice, nice. Hopefully, <laughs> <laughs> I actually I haven't checked yet. It's only been up for maybe like four hours now. So yeah, hopefully everyone hasn't. Oh, they'll be crashed sold out. it. Sold yeah. Out? yeah, yeah. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, surely. Yeah, <laughs> and then yeah, four four weeks from now, we'll be drawing the winner of the latest giveaway. So Alex will be winning two. Yeah. So Alex, <laughs> Alex is gonna now he's gonna subscribe. So he's gonna subscribe to our mailing list, and then he's gonna win the two, yep. the two Scatros. Well, I heard it here first, so I have to. Yeah. 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 You do realize now we've said it on a live podcast. There's no way we can let you win. <laughs> 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 it would look so rigged, <laughs> so rigged. But yeah, is there anything else you guys can think of for tips for us? Us first timers out there trying to paint an army. I mean, it's almost guaranteed that I'll think of some things after the podcast. But um I think that's I think that's it for me in terms of keeping your motivation and picking your army. I feel like both of them go hand in hand, hence why this topic was this topic. Because picking your army and keeping that motivation and and, and finishing an army, they all tie together. They all tie together. Because you need to enjoy what you're painting if you're going to finish an army. And most of the time that's picking something you think is cool. Someone might be able to write in the chat whether they paint something up because they like the rules of it. It might be a thing, but I'd find it hard to 
personally stay motivated just because something has cool rules. Yeah, hundred percent. If anyone's got any other sort of tips and tricks that keep them motivated or how they pick an army, let us know in the comments. We'll we'll definitely check it out and we can sort of discuss that at a later date when you know Alex is coming back. So. <laughs> yeah, it, we'll, if we get Alex back, we can have. If he wants to come back, yeah. If he wants to come back, we haven't traumatized him too much, <laughs> you know. Uh, be awesome to rehash this one and sort of see see what we've learned and yeah. see what I've learned from it. See where I'm at. You might be able to ask similar questions to other people that come on. What keeps him motivated yeah. and that type of stuff. Definitely, it's a good it's a good question because it seems like it's a little bit different for everyone, and you know those out there watching and listening might might relate differently they might one thing might just click with them and be like yep that's all i needed to know yeah we do chat about it on stream a lot people's brains work differently so it's going to be there's going to be things that work for some people that won't work for others 100 percent. but yeah i think i think that pretty much wraps it up guys so thank you so much alex for joining us it's been an absolute pleasure thanks for uh, having me i've learned i've learned so much about how crazy you are, but also, <laughs> but also, what it takes to to paint and stick to an army. Okay, what, what do you do? You know what your next project is going to be after the Black Legion at all? Well, it sounds to me like I don't have a choice. Kakaradons. Yeah. because <laughs> uh, I was going to ask what crazy test model were you going to do, like an Imperial Knight or something. What's that big, big uh, <laughs> Forge World transport? Uh, the one that's like an oversized like. Re- yeah, Repulsa. I've already done the small one. No, don't do it. You're a madman. I'm pretty sure that's in the legends. I don't even think it's like legal. Doesn't matter. Looks cool. Another. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So yeah, thank you, BFG Justin, as always, and thank you everyone tuning in live on YouTube and across the the streaming platforms. And uh, yeah, we'll see you in two weeks for episode four. See you guys. Thanks, oh, guys. That could it, it could be lucky. Oh, it might be lucky on episode four. We'll see. Awesome. Yeah. Thanks, guys. Thanks. Thank you.